Hey everyone, this is Maple, aka RoboFights. Uh, just wanted to thank everyone here for participating in the Mecha Melee Spooktober Skirmish Garrison Archangel event. It was the first ever community run and organized event. Uh, thank you all very much. I mean, <laughs> you were not expecting to get that many people or mechs for an event like this. So big shout outs to uh, the Garrison Archangel team for giving up the prize to kind of offer uh, the winning mech an official spot in the roster. That is beyond cool. Uh, so congratulations, Miku Sim, for, uh, for winning that. Um, your artwork, courtesy of Sage the 13th, who is another one of our uh, fantastic community members, uh, is apparently in progress. So you'll be getting that. Um, your mech's also been submitted to Pelor, who is the Garrison Archangel producer and leader of the team. Um, so he's got that file, so they should hopefully be updating that along with the latest Cosmic Clash PvP mech here sometime soon. Uh, your Steam gift card will hopefully be in your email or via private message in Discord here by the end of the weekend. Um, awesome Possum, your art also in progress, and the same situation with your gift card. So congratulations both to some fantastic and uh, well-fought fights. Um, and thank you all for participating, for commenting, for, <laughs> for raging, for loving, for laughing, for any and everything. Uh, you guys really are the lifeblood of the... Uh, of the game, of the community, uh, seeing some of these builds was truly awe-inspiring. I mean, I've been doing AI battles for almost since the almost since the game's uh, been out as a beta. Um, but I, I was shown a lot of really creative builds, uh, Volventura and uh, Kiko Pro. They came at it and attacked with two of their uh, prime PvP mechs. Usually player versus player mechs don't do well in AI versus AI, but Kiko Pro with his Snow Spectre and Burnt Banana, uh, they did very well, and I'm extremely impressed with Burnt Banana, for instance. That's a really cool build. Um, man, just really fantastic stuff all around. Um, Awesome Possum with his uh, Station 05, who took second place. Uh, did some really cool stuff with a railgun. Um, taught me how to uh, kind of take advantage of a situation with the AI where it doesn't really recognize the railgun's charge up as a threat. So basically he's pinging you with that railgun shot, that hefty railgun shot, for a thousand points of damage. Um, all the time with extreme consistency. It's it's honestly a thing of beauty. Um, that had been something I've been trying to do for a while or figure out for a while, and I just haven't been able to do it. And sure enough, he did it with a great, great turret build style mech. Um, I also got to hand it out to uh, Cybroid. Uh, that was a mech with uh, just thrusters, full Falcon frame with a katana, so, just a pure, pure, pure speed demon. And I've been saying for, for forever that at least for AI versus AI matches, your mobility stat or your speed is, well, it's a negative, uh, a negative stat. It doesn't really mean anything or do anything, and he proved me wrong. Won, uh, won two matches, I believe, uh, with a pure speed build so I mean the, the game is cracked wide open anything is possible um, and of course you have Pyrite Paladin uh, that was another fantastic build uh, was able to utilize 
the shoulder pads to charge through uh, incoming gunfire or enemy attacks. Uh, and the AI took really good advantage of that um, a few times while using its uh, uh, drill lance, which he used this, the premium, not premium, but the cosmetic skin for it, uh, which turns it into a mace, um, doing some hefty uh, kind of staggering damage there to keep opponents off kilter, uh, complemented very nicely with the Ranger Burst Rifle, which is that uh, three-round kind of marksmanship rifle. Ah, mwah. Beautiful, beautiful build. And a PvP build at that. That one totally defied expectations. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, not to be a fanboy, but I love me some Pyrite. That's uh, probably number one on my uh, personal fan favorite list there. Uh, really, really fantastic build. And everyone just is just coming out there with some phenomenal builds. So kudos and thank you all very much. Uh, I hope you had a great time, as much of a, a fun as I did uh, recording it on, most of it was done last Thursday, uh, to editing it, to all that stuff. It's, it's been a long, sometimes tiring process, but seeing you guys get hyped for it, uh, get excited, get sad, get angry, uh, every emotion for it, and just really engaging with one another and talking about builds. That's what this tournament was all about, was energizing you guys because you guys energized me. So me giving back to that, uh, it's a very heartwarming experience, and I'm glad we got to all share that together. So, um, I'd like to take this moment to say officially that we will be running another AI tournament. Now, details are still kind of uh, in the ether, but I'm planning for something either late January, early February for Valentine's, and that will be a um, doubles match, so 2v2. So kind of start thinking about how to maybe build with a partner in mind. Because I'm thinking uh, maybe you don't submit two mechs and you find a friend to uh, partner with, to build with. Or if you don't have anyone uh, in mind... Um, we can do a uh, good old-fashioned blind date for you and pick you out of random from other folks who don't have uh, quote-unquote dates. So that'll be fun. All right, now that said, um, I know some people have some minor issues, some questions, or some concerns about how to kind of build uh, not necessarily in general, but for AI versus AI matches. So I will uh, be kind of taking you guys through the thought process of the Grim Rider, uh, who you've seen spinning on the screen for about nine minutes now. Um, this was the theme mech that I introduced and uh, kind of was made as the mascot for Halloween and for the Spooktober skirmish, who got a little bit, a lot of bit, farther than I had anticipated he would get. Um, I was expecting a different sort of environment uh, with more power gaming in mind, and I built him for theme first and then tweaked some stuff around to kind of play to that. Um, and the field instead was something more akin to people building and playing with things that they thought were cool or fun, which I personally think is way better. Uh, power gaming, uh, because I'm a highly competitive person, is something that I spend a lot of time on. Um, for instance, Typhoon Oasis, which was a mech I designed 
relatively early on before the game hit Steam or early access. Um, that was a mech I ran through over 50 different simulations with for matches, and it lost one round out of all of those. Matches, of course, are first to two, so it lost one round of one match during those testing phases. Then and only then was I confident enough to submit it. And back then, I built a heavy mech with a high HP who took advantage, uh, a lot like Station 05 did, of AI activity where they wouldn't really come close to you. So using that, I built a mech that was equipped to deal and force that situation all the time. Swore missiles to pepper them when they were out far, which was often. Shoulder gatlings to hit them uh, from far range when the swarms were on cooldown or when they got close. SMG to cover up and back up for the gatlings as well as provide a stun and knockdown so Typhoon Oasis could withdraw further back as the AI was prone to do at least back then and a Dragoon Shotgun, which is an anti-stability shotgun, to hit anyone that managed in the rare occasion to get close, to put them back in the threat zone of those other things. Uh, that was how I built, I spent eh, probably ballpark of three hours building Typhoon Oasis, give or take, and testing. Um, Grim Rider was significantly shorter because I already had a relatively good idea of what I anticipated to be the meta um, and then built around that. So without further ado, let's kind of get into the meat and potatoes of it since I've been rambling on for uh, a bit too long. So here are our overall stats. Uh, you can see he's got a decent amount of uh, haul points, not a whole lot of stability, uh, some minor melee damage and a pretty hefty load as well as some nice stability. Uh, these are our overall stats here. Again, you'll see it's focused mostly in armor, which is your HP and strength, which allows for you to carry things as well as deal respectable melee damage. Uh, again, I tend to think speed as a uh, negative stat, but I think I might have to be revisiting that thanks to uh, a couple of our fantastic uh, builds that were submitted. Next, we have overall stats here. Uh, boost capacity, that's how much uh, boost meter you have. Boost meter allows you to engage iframes, which is that dodge boost move that leaves the after image. Uh, that lets you kind of mitigate any incoming damage. Super helpful. Um, mobility and dash distance. Uh, dash distance affects how far you move while um, you do that iframe dash. Uh, as well as weaponry, specifically melee weaponry, a lot of the attacks will move you uh, a specific distance, and the higher dash distance you have, the more you move during that, and that's going to come into play later. Uh, these are mostly what I build, though, for uh, PvP, for instance. Uh, then, of course, your overall modified stats. Now, let's go ahead and get into the equipment here. So, on his right hand, we have the Blood Reader Axe, which I believe is German for uh, uh, Blood Taker or something like that. Um, this is a 750 weight item. It is utterly fantastic um, for a number of reasons. First of all, the Axe version uh, is very short-ranged. However, it has a lot of dash distance to it, which means you can be very aggressive. Um, it also deals very respectable stability damage, which means you can throw an enemy off kilter and get them in a, almost a stun lock to rack up damage, which its armor damage or HP damage is already very respectable. And when it transforms into a scythe, uh, it gets better range and damage options. Uh, which allows it to be even more uh, kind of aggressive, even though it doesn't really move much. Uh, the extra range kind of helps make up for that, as well as uh, 
other things. So that weapon uh, as a melee for a highly aggressive mech like this uh, plays very well to that strength because my armor value is relatively high. I can sit there and face tank hits, uh, not all day, but a decent amount. I can trade with you and my trades are gonna hurt you probably a lot more than you're, they're gonna hurt me. Um, this weapon also pairs fantastically because it's sort of a mid-range uh, weapon um, because of that uh, long scythe mode and the dash distance that the normal axe mode has. Um, it also combos very well into itself. Overall, a fantastic weapon. Might be getting a nerf. We'll see. Again, not a dev. Just something that I see coming. Um, since it's a weapon that I've been seeing people have been sleeping on for a while, and, I mean, you saw the results of Spooktober Skirmish, and they've seen some results of it in PvP matches as well. It does its job well, maybe too well. Uh, next is a weapon that we know is getting a nerf, or at least a change. That's the Flamethrower. Uh, it's a very kind of simple weapon. Oh, that's eel? What? I thought that was German. No, no, there we go. Yeah. Um, the flamethrower is a great weapon. It kind of combines the uh, Wesp assault rifle, which doesn't do any stability damage, which means it can't ever stun or knock down an opponent, and a little bit of the SMG, uh, which is designed specifically for stability damage. This does a little bit of stability damage and a decent amount of armor damage. Um, it also has a more limited range, but the way that the arenas are set up, they're kind of small. So that range really uh, is a non-issue for the most part. And in PvP, you can kind of sidestep it and not have to worry about it that much, uh, depending on the player. Uh, but when it comes to AI versus AI, it's something that I can't stress enough, which is practice and study. And if you remember any of the Spooktober skirmish matches where a flamethrower was used, you'll often see mechs not really recognizing those flames as a threat. So they don't dodge very often, they don't block very often. They'll just sit there and they'll face tank it. And that damage really racks up really quick. Now, the devs have said, or at least suggested, that this may be going towards a dot or damage over time effect. And as far as I know, there's been a little pushback um, because that was originally proposed a while back, but people weren't really uh, keen on introducing an RPG-like status effect to a mech game. Personally, I think it's pretty great, cool, and different. Um, but they are apparently going to start working on uh, that here soon because it is still a problem. Um, but yeah, this weapon pairs fantastic with the scythe and the axe because it covers very well a, uh, a mid-ground range. Um, so if you're hitting somebody with the axe, you can follow up very much with a flamethrower and vice versa. Another important thing with a flamethrower is that it's a reloadable weapon. Typically, uh, I recommend limiting the amount of extra actions your mech can take. Uh, this includes things like reloading or having to load in multiple shots to a weapon via a timer. Um, just because the less your mech has to worry about in its uh, algorithms as it kind of processes attacks, the more direct and focused it can be. So on this mech, you'll see I really only have uh, two main weapons. I've got the flamethrower and the axe, which both fit a mid-range uh, type functionality. Um, the homing laser, which I'll talk about in a bit, is a one-pop shot weapon. Uh, you wait, load up, uh, yeah, I'll just go to it now. Uh, Basically, you wait, you load the shot, and uh, it fires it almost as much as uh, it can, and about as frequently as it can as soon as it gets it. Um, it's great. It's another weapon that's going to get nerfed. Um, they've said it's very strong. 
uh, you either are burning up all of your uh, boost meter to dodge it, or you're face tanking it, or you're shielding it. Um, this is this weapon and the flamethrower are two weapons I consider to be highly meta, so I uh, built for that thanks to the shoulder shield, which I'll get in later. Uh, but the uh, homing laser here, it's again effective at just about any range, stacks up damage very quick, while it's nearly totally mitigated by a shield. Uh, the damage is more than worth it, and it limits the functions the mech has to worry about. So with like a Tatsil or an Astrape cannon, it's constantly reloading, so the mech may fire it at inopportune moments or when it's not at capacity, whereas a uh, homing laser, it fires once, that option is now off the table until it reloads, uh, and then it can utilize any of its other weapons. So it kind of streamlines the mech's decision-making process, uh, which I feel is very critical uh, to a build. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the meta thing on this one. Since Mikusim and I apparently had some convergent evolution uh, in one way or another uh, about how to build. And that's going to be the shoulder shield here, which I've been saying is a game changer for a while. Um, and we kind of saw how that played and that it totally mitigated a lot of uh, Mikusim's mech. Specifically, his flamethrower and his homing laser, which I thought for sure I'd see a lot more of. Um, so this bad boy takes a shoulder slot, which isn't really that valuable in my opinion, um, and slaps it with something that's gonna help just about any build. Um, it gives you a defensive option when your uh, boost meter is down and you're overloaded, so you can shield with that. Um, most importantly, if your mech is at range, uh, Oftentimes, it will use a shoulder shield to block that damage as it closes in, which is very, very handy for AI and for PvP. So with this build, um, if you're a ranged fighter, I can block your damage and move in close to hit you with the flamethrower or the axe. Uh, or, if you're at any range, it can fire off the homing laser and scrape together some damage on you. So... The only two options I constantly have access to with this, or rather that the Grim Rider has access to, is the Axe and the Scythe, which will never run out and have decent range and are able to get you in combat very quickly, and the Flamethrower, which complements that weapon. While the Shield is a situational basis and uh, is used to counter builds that may be weak to, like heavily aggressive uh, range builds, and to some minor extent melee builds, while the homing laser is just an overall fantastic weapon. Um, easily number one, until it gets whatever nerf it gets, then who knows. Uh, second place, probably Astrape. And third, probably, um, what's the name of it? I always call them rapid missiles. Let's take a look. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Ulan missiles. Uh, these are your straightforward uh, quick fire missiles. All these weapons have something very much in common in that they reload quick. Uh, their damage isn't super high for the most part, but uh, the rapid recharge rate more than makes up for it, uh, at least in my opinion, both for PvP and for uh, AI versus AI. Okay. So now we know about Grim Rider and that it is mainly a mid-range focused mech because the arena size plays very well to mid-range. Uh, hard to run from, uh, relatively easy to get up in someone's face. And if you can kind of cover the mid-range around that, uh, you're gravy. Miku Sim, rather than the shoulder shield, um, went for a full Myrmidon frame, which is an all-strength build. And he swapped out the shield for... Um, swarm missiles, uh, which are called, let's take a look, uh, Tingu, I guess. Uh, 
So with that, he increases his mid-range capabilities. Uh, if you're outside the threat donut that those trigger, uh, you are a victim to his uh, homing lasers. If you come in, he's got his scythe and his flamethrower ready. Overall, an extremely aggressive and extremely effective mech, as you all saw. So, well done on that sim. Good, good stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and go into the internals. Uh, I went ahead with Reinforced Frame, uh, which is 1,000 HP for 500 health. If you know you're going to be taking hits a lot, that's going to be very critical, which plays in with Reinforced Stabilizers. Uh, stability is that thing that uh, lets you basically withstand uh, hacks from incoming opponents easier, which means you can trade more effectively, which we saw a few times throughout uh, Mecha Melee, Spooktober Skirmish, where, uh, well, Grim Rider, for instance, was fighting Mikusim's mech, and even though he has a lot of strength, so he's dishing out a lot of damage, uh, Grim Rider was occasionally able to force through that and uh, get Mikusim's mech into a destabilized state, at which point I continue to combo it and add damage on. Uh, this can also be a double-edged sword, as we saw with Station 05, where its stability is so crazy high, partially in effect because its weight load is so high, uh, that Grim Rider was basically able to get it and keep it in stun for quite a long time, which let it rack up crazy stupid damage, crazy stupid quick. So, Reinforced Stabilizers is great for things like the Dominus or other kind of slow-moving weapons. Uh, Dominus, if I can hit, for instance. Um, and things like possibly the Railgun. I'll have to try that a little bit more. But uh, if you're expecting to trade, uh, you're going to want to probably consider Stabilizers to some degree. And then, of course, the last one we have is Kill Shot Corrector, which increases the damage uh, both kinds, stability and uh, armor damage or HP damage for ranged weapons, which are your homing laser and your flamethrower, which are already very effective at almost any range. So you're going to be dealing uh, some nastiness with uh, with that for sure. Um, but yeah, that's uh, Grim Rider in a nutshell. Then, of course, I mean, color theme name and all that was based off of the Headless Horseman legend and the Grim Reaper for a nice little Halloween mech. And then of course tailored a little bit to cater to the meta to be more of a challenge to people, but ended up being uh, a bit better than I anticipated. Um, but yeah, that's kind of an insight on uh, how to build. A lot of it is kind of looking at what's... Uh, what the AI is reacting to, how it's reacting. Um, I know Moody Data came in with a build that I will forever call good stuff um, because he equipped a series of weapons that is generally overall effective at most ranges and on the Myrmidon frame, which, I mean, you can't go wrong with the strength frame because it does everything. That's kind of an internal joke and kind of also super true. So overall, a relatively solid mech. Um, playing a little bit from Rude Boy, who is a preset mech and gives a lot of people uh, trouble. Uh, I kind of joke that he's a casual filter, but he is very strong. Um, by utilizing the katana, which a lot of other people uh, also used a katana with the revolver, which is a super fun uh, PvP build or build to use in general. Highly recommend it. But uh, with the AI, you'll notice that it never uses level uh, 2 or 3 with the katana. It's always either level 1 or level 4. And the katana destabilizes or knocks down people really easy. So if you build an overweight mech, for instance, you can capitalize on that, which will allow you to hit the opponent more frequently in kind of a, uh, a stun state to collect more kanji or more charge, which will let you activate a level four faster. Now, why is a level four important? Well, the level four imp is important for the katana 
because the AI, much like the railgun charge rate, does not recognize that attack as a threat, at least currently. And we saw that a couple times in uh, Spooktober Skirmish, where people would just go ahead and they would take uh, level four katana strikes right to the face. Uh, Obsidian Seagrave was somewhat based on uh, that concept of uh, low, uh, low damage, easy kanji generation. Uh, didn't quite work out too well though. Um, but yeah, just, just it's things like that. You've just got to really get in there, uh, test out, and try. Um, whenever I'm building a competitive AI mech, I uh, generally spend between one to two hours. If you've seen any of my other videos, the Cyclone Duster series is my PvP style mech and build, where I use the Strelka, which is not really very meta or fashionable, but I love it. Um, in the initial testing phases for that, to get it to where I wanted it, and then uh, use it as a jumping point. It took me five hours to get that uh, build to where I wanted it. So if you can think it, if you can dream it, you can build it. Um, but yeah, I mean, take a look at some of the crazy builds we saw in uh, Spooktober Skirmish. I mean, people from all walks of life doing all kinds of crazy, uh, crazy builds and they, they just work. They just work, and it's utterly crazy. Um, so let's go ahead and just show you kind of like a basic match here to kind of uh, give you an idea of a... Uh, wrong one. Of uh, things to look out for. So we'll go into a uh, custom game here. Yeah, we'll just load up a duel. We'll do arena. Time limit. 120. Music. You now it doesn't really matter. Yeah, Curse of Poly. That's the default. And uh, we'll just go ahead and we'll queue up. It's kind of late at night, so we'll tab down the online thing. Set off insane. And we'll cycle through some mechs to grab my boy. There he is. And we'll pit him against, I don't know, a random. Yeah. All right, so we're fighting Snow Spectre. That was actually a match that happened. And since we're, you know, we are in duel, um, so let's go ahead and take a look. Match starts, Ready, whatever. Go. Okay, so the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna fire the high line, which it does. He's gonna fire the Astray, which he does. Um, it's blocking with the shield, uh, using flamethrower when it gets in close, uh, dodging as it's able to. Um, looks like yeah, I may have changed a little bit here because I'm seeing some uh, different patterns. Um, trying to reload, goes for a swing, misses. You can see these back weapons being fired as soon as they recharge, and that shoulder shield being used to great effect whenever it's uh, able to. Um, Snow Spectre also has a uh, kind of a dodge shoulder armament, which is super handy. Um, you, you can just see the, the flamethrower is being ignored. Uh, totally, and he's being lit up for it. Ready, so that was a relatively go. solid and convincing win for Grim Rider there, uh, utilizing that flamethrower and uh, the axe in uh, tandem. And they can see it dodging or trying to dodge all those um, homing laser shots, uh, blocking all these attacks from Snow Spectre, and just kind of getting up in there. Oh, Spectre got in a hit. Uh, Grim Rider's been stabilized. Uh, HL recharged, flamethrower. Solid combo. Flamethrower again. So Spectre doing a good job dodging, actually. Very impressive. Um, getting in there with his own flamethrower. Okay, now Grim Rider is in there with the axe, and that's where the magic happens. Um, Scythe mode is active, and we're just racking damage up. Back up to high, high HL. Uh, go in. Uh, trying to start a... Oh, could have had a... Uh, uh, stun chain there with the um, Magnum Barat, but it didn't uh, activate. Um, yeah, that just kind of gives you an idea and a play-by-play uh, -play for kind of what happens in an AI fight, just to kind of study that. So if you saw anything you liked, 
if you thought anything was helpful or handy, um, please uh, go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, and all that kind of nonsense. And if you found it super helpful, I'll uh, see if I can cut another video with uh, maybe how to build or try something else.